JavaScript has seven primitive types, and most of these we use all the time, with the exception of big int and symbol. It is at least somewhat obvious that the purpose of big int is to represent large integers. But this symbol primitive is a bit more mysterious. Given there are only seven primitives, whatever this symbol does must be pretty important. But I think for most of us, its role doesn't seem to be much more than a gotcha question for technical interviews. We don't generally use this thing. I never really worried too much about it, until around two years ago when Angular was starting to build their Signals implementation, and I noticed they were using symbols. For whatever reason, nearly two years later, I decided it was finally time to figure out why this symbol primitive is useful, and specifically why it is useful for Angular's Signals implementation. First, let's take a step back and figure out what a symbol can be used for at the most basic level. We can start by doing what I probably should have just done several years ago, which is just look the thing up on MDN. We can quickly discover this built-in symbol object, which is not the symbol primitive itself, but we can use it to create symbol primitives. The basic role of creating these symbols is to create a value that is unique for the lifetime of the program. For example, I can create two different symbols, even using the exact same string for the symbol, and these are guaranteed to be unique. The provision of for the lifetime of the program is something relevant to consider here. Despite their guaranteed uniqueness, it wouldn't really make sense to use a symbol as a replacement for a typical unique ID that you might associate with a user or an article or something like that. A symbol is not serializable, so we wouldn't be able to store it in a database or use it in a URL or anything like that. And if we want to just create two values that are guaranteed to be unique, couldn't we just use a normal object? Any object we create, even if it has the same values as some other object, is going to point to a unique object in memory and will fail any quality check just like a symbol would. But of course there is a use for this symbol primitive, and primarily that is that we can use them as unique property keys for objects. For example, let's create two keys, one symbol and one that is just an object. We will use those as property keys in another object. So far so good. Both the symbol and the object can be used as a key for a property in the object. But if we look closely, we will notice that the key for the object is not the unique object itself, but the serialized string of that object, which is not going to be unique. If we create a new symbol now, even one that is created exactly the same as the previous symbol, and we use it as another key in the object, we will see that the original symbol key was not overwritten, and now we have both unique symbols as properties in this object. But if we try using another object as a key, it will be serialized to the same string and overwrite our original property. And that is the key benefit of using a symbol. It gives us a way to create a unique key for an object that cannot be accidentally overwritten by something else. The only way to update the value for that symbol in the object is to use a reference to the original symbol that was created. This makes sense, but it still might be difficult to see the actual use case here. So now let's get to how Angular uses symbols for their signals implementation. Fortunately, there is a little comment right away that helps set us on the right path. This signal symbol is created, at least partly, to tell signals apart from other functions. Which might seem like an interesting statement given we have just been talking about how symbols are useful as unique keys for objects. But a function in JavaScript is also an object, and like any other object, we can assign properties to it. For example, I can create this function, and I can call it to invoke the function body. But I can also set a property on this function and access that. This is specifically what Angular utilizes to distinguish signals from other functions. Take a look at how computed signals are created in Angular's source code. Despite the seeming magic of signals, all we are really returning from this create computed function in the end is another function. We call this function to access the signal's value, and behind the scenes, this call also triggers the things necessary for all of the signal's reactivity stuff. We've actually done a deep dive on that aspect of this code in another video, which I'll link in the description if you're interested, but let's just focus on the symbol stuff here. 
Before this function is returned, there is this one extra step where we are treating this function as an object and adding a property to it. This property uses the signal symbol, which is imported from here where it is created by Angular. And using this unique signal symbol is the only way to set or update this specific key in any object. The node for this computed is then set as the value for that property. This serves a dual purpose. One is the simple purpose of just storing this node on a property that can be accessed when necessary. The other is that this is a way to mark a particular function as being and fulfilling the role of a signal, which has a special type of meaning and implication within Angular. Angular is then able to check if a particular value is reactive, in the sense of whatever that means to Angular's internal handling, by defining a reactive value as anything that has this signal symbol being used as a key for a property. For example, this function Angular defines can be used to check if a value is reactive or not. It simply checks to see if a property using the signal symbol as a key is defined. If we search for signal in Angular's codebase, you can see many places where either this special signal symbol is being used to set a property or retrieve the associated reactive node from that property. This adds a level of robustness in that since all symbols are unique, it needs to be the sole signal symbol in existence that has been used to define this property. We couldn't even fake this by creating our own seemingly identical symbol. For example, say we tried something like this. We create our fake signal, create a signal symbol just like Angular did, and assign a node as a property on our function using our own signal symbol as the key. Our fake signal would fail this reactive value check because we didn't use the specific signal symbol that Angular created. If we did use that symbol specifically, it would work. So this isn't supposed to function as some kind of signal fraud prevention check. The more direct reason for using symbols is generally to avoid name collision. For example, let's say that the way Angular marked something as being a reactive value was by doing the exact same thing, but instead of using a symbol as the key, just a simple string is used instead. This could work more or less the same, and realistically, in the vast majority of circumstances, it likely wouldn't matter. But technically, it would be possible to accidentally override this key with some other value. This is unlikely, but technically, we could create a signal, and then decide we also want to define a property on that signal for some purpose, and we just happen to pick the same value Angular is using for some special purpose. Or perhaps on a function that isn't supposed to be a reactive value, you happen to assign a property to it using the string signal as a key. Now in the eyes of Angular, this thing is a reactive value. These situations are unlikely, but a much more realistic situation is in the case of Angular's error symbol. As we can see below this create computed function, Angular also defines a bunch of other symbols, one of which is this error symbol. In this case, it isn't being used to define a property on an object, Instead, it is used to see if this specific, unique, error symbol has been assigned as the node's value. This happens here, and you can see a computed signal checks for that here. The advantage of a symbol here is that for node.value to equal error, it strictly means that the symbol itself has to have been assigned to node.value. Again, even if we created a new symbol with the string error, just like Angular did, and assigned that to node.value, this check would still fail because all symbols are unique, even if we create them with the same value. The potential for trouble here is probably more apparent than with the signal symbol example. In this case, it is reasonable to imagine a scenario where if we were to implement this check like this, we might actually legitimately assign the string error as the value of the node. In this case, no error has actually occurred. The value of the computer just happens to be the string error. So symbols are able to provide a level of robustness and safety for us in different situations. Keep in mind that I don't speak for the Angular team. I've just gone down a rabbit hole investigating how they are using symbols for the sake of my own curiosity. And I've made some assumptions as to why they are being used and their benefit in Angular's specific circumstance. If you found this video helpful, a like or subscribe before you go would be greatly appreciated, and I hope to see you back here again for the next video.